Then many of his disciples who are listening said, this saying is hard, who can accept it? So again, a symbolic statement, not hard to understand, but a literal statement. Hello and welcome to Kept in Her Heart, where we talk about all things faith-related. I'm your host, Jenny Fuchs. Let's talk about what is the Catholic understanding of the Eucharist. First of all, the, the official teaching of the church is that what were um, at the beginning of every Catholic Mass, just bread and just a wine, through the words of Jesus Christ, through his power and the working of the Holy Spirit, become fully and totally the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ. And how can this, how can this happen? It's kind, of a, it's kind of a big belief, like, where do you guys get this? That seems kind of weird. So let's dive into where does this come from? and how can we better understand it? So the number one place that this comes from is John chapter six. So if you go to your Bible and you read John chapter six, that is going to be really, I think, the key to understanding the Catholic understanding of the Eucharist uh, and the Catholic teachings on the Eucharist. So the whole chapter is good. Uh, it's the multiplication of the loaves and fishes. He walks on water, Jesus walks on water. Um, and then there's this bread of life discourse. Um, so I would recommend the entire chapter, but you can, if you're in a hurry, um, you can jump ahead and you can start at verse 26, I believe it is. Um, that, you know, they're looking for more loaves and fishes to eat and he, he opens their minds to what he's really doing and what he's really working. Um, I'm not going to read you the entire chapter, but I do want to highlight a couple of verses. So I'm going to start at verse 51 and 52 and then um, look at just a couple of the reaction verses. So what is Jesus saying and how is, are his contemporaries reacting to what he has said? And I think that's helping us to really understand what did Jesus mean in this situation? So verse 51, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. How do the contemporaries react? Verse 52, the Jews quarreled among themselves saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? So how did the Jews understand him? Did they understand him symbolically or did they understand him literally? Well, is a symbolic statement hard to understand? No. Um, would it cause quarreling? How can this man give us the flesh to eat? No, a symbol, this is a symbol of my flesh, that wouldn't cause any quarreling, right? But a literal statement would cause quarreling. So how does Jesus react? In the next several verses, he doesn't back down on that statement or clarify that's not what I meant. He ramps it up. He basically repeats himself four more times. And in each time he uses even more sort of graphic language, which doesn't make our translation. But by the time he gets to the last one, he's saying, you need to gnaw on my flesh. So he is not backing down. He is ramping up what he's saying. How do they react? In verse 60, then many of his disciples who are listening said, this saying is hard, who can accept it? So again, a symbolic statement, not hard to understand, but a literal statement, that is hard to understand. And these are his disciples. So these are people who were already in favor of Jesus, already following Jesus, you know, uh, already on the road with him. And they're saying, this is hard. Who can accept it? Right? And if we jump ahead to verse 66, as a result of this, many of his disciples returned to their former way of lives and no longer accompanied him. So disciples are leaving him over this teaching. They wouldn't need to leave if it was a symbolic statement. So again, John 6, I think, is the key to really understanding the Catholic um, teachings on the Eucharist. So I've talked a lot about John 6, but I also, maybe you're wondering, are there any other places in the Bible besides John 6 that talk about the Eucharist? And yes, there are. Thank you for asking. Um, so one of them you will find in 1 Corinthians 11, verses 23 through 29. And um, where St. Paul starts here is, for what I received from the Lord is what I also handed on to you. And he talks about the Last Supper. And you can also find that in Matthew 26, verses 26 through 28, Mark 14, Luke 22. And then St. Paul covers it again here, where Jesus says, take this, he, he takes the bread, he blesses it, and he says, take this, all of you, and eat it 
this is my body. He doesn't say this is a figure of my body, a symbol of my body. He says this is my body given for you. Uh, similarly with the cup, he takes the wine, he blesses it, he gives it to them. Take this all of you and drink it. This is the blood of the covenant, you know, the new and everlasting covenant that will be shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. So he's again fulfilling what we hear in John 6 here at the Last Supper and St. Paul is bringing up uh, the same thing as his same understanding. And then what does St. Paul say? Um, do this as often you drink it in remembrance of me. Uh, for as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you will claim the death of the Lord until he comes. And then verse 27 and verse 29 are of particular interest here. Verse 27, therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks of the cup, the cup of the Lord unworthily will have to answer for the body and blood of the Lord. That sounds like he thinks it's the body and blood of the Lord, yes? And then we look at verse 29. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. Again, it really seems like St. Paul is taking this body and blood thing literally, right? It, it, it wouldn't be, why would you be drinking judgment upon yourself if it was just a symbol? It's not just a symbol, it's the real thing. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.